In this video, we are going to look at how you can schedule your lambda function at a fixed interval using event bridge. This scheduling of lambda can be at a fixed rate for example every 5 minutes or every 10 minutes or every hour or it can be at a specific time such as every day at 8 pm. In most of the architecture diagrams and use cases, lambda is often triggered on some kind of event or invoked through API gateway or ALBs. But there are certain use cases which are apt for lambda scheduling also. First one is automated backups at the end of every day. So these backups can be your EBS drive backups, S3 data backups or any other kind of backup which you deem necessary for your application. Second use case could be backend cleaning. For example, after 8 p.m. you want to clean up the servers as there won't be any traffic. So this can also include logs cleaning you can schedule lambda function to clean logs older than one month or two months based on your requirement. The next use case could be uh, consolidated reports which can be sent to the business stakeholders at the end of every day. So lambda can trigger Athena queries or process S3 objects or can run any database queries and it can send the data points into an email using simple email service. This is not an exhaustive list of use cases. There could be many more such use cases. Let's look at the architecture diagram for scheduling lambda function. We will be using event bridge and create a rule to schedule our lambda function. So there are two options. So first is to schedule at a fixed rate, for example, every five minute or every one hour. And the other option is just to provide the cron expression. Now let's go to AWS console for the demo. So this is my lambda function console. I don't have any lambda as of now. I'll click on create function. I can name my function as my scheduled lambda. I can choose runtime as Python and click on create function. So this is my Python code. I will remove this code and I'll just print the statement with current time. And for the current date time, I will import a new module. and I'll create a local variable. If I want to use it here, I will just wrap this in str. Yeah, this is it. I will just deploy this and test this once. And for testing, I will configure the test event. I'll name it as test. Just pass an empty JSON. Click save. Click on test here. You can see this time at which lambda invoked is the current time. So my lambda function is created. I will go to event bridge now to create the rule. So this is my event bridge console. Click on create rule here and the name of rule can be lambda scheduler. I will not pass any description because that's optional. Now in the rule type, you can see you have two options rule with an event pattern. So this option is used when you want to run the rule on a particular event pattern, let's say a payment status as pending, completed or in progress and you want to trigger this rule only on completed, let's say you want to send confirmation email, use this type of event pattern. But in this example, we want to use the schedule option. So I'll choose that and click next. In schedule pattern, you have two options. One is a fine grained schedule that runs at a specific time. So you can pass the cron expression. Let's say if I want to run my Lambda function every day at 8 p.m. So I can just pass star here and then 20, then star, then star, then star, then star. So this will run my Lambda function at 20th hour every day. But for now, for the testing purpose, I will choose this schedule that runs at a regular rate. Here you can pass the value. Let's say every one minute I want to choose. So you have the option to choose minute, hour and days. So I want to run my Lambda every one minute. So I'll choose one here and choose minutes option and click on next here. Now the target type should be AWS service. I will choose Lambda here. And the function name is my scheduled Lambda. And you have the option to configure alias and version. You also have option for the additional settings. So first is the target input that you want to 
use this could be matched event or you want to pass a json constant or you want to have a input transformer i'll just choose matched event because as such i'm not passing anything i will not change anything here because this looks good i'll click on next and then i don't want to add any tag for now so i'll click on create rule now i'll go to my lambda and uh, i'll go to monitor and i'll just clear the existing logs so that i have a fresh set of logs I'll, this is the old log stream i'll just delete this and let's just wait for one minute and we will start getting the log streams here with the in lambda invocation details yeah we got the first invocation and if i open this you can see that time at which lambda invoked is this so this is my first invocation let me just filter this out so i'll just copy this and search here yeah so you can see that by the time i entered so i had another event so you can see the first event invoked at 215820 then 215920 and the next would be 1 minute after this time so you can see that the scheduler is in action so this is a really good way to schedule the common workloads using lambda function because you don't have to spend money on your backend servers and if you want to monitor your invocations you can go to metrics here you can go to all metrics here and you can query let's say i choose aws events here and i want to only search for my rule name i want to see the invocation yeah i would be running this uh, matrix inside query builder so i want to search the invocations for lambda scheduler so i'll click on run here so you can see the line here i'll choose uh, number here so you can see as of now we have three invocations if i go to my cloud watch if i just refresh this you can see that we have the third invocation here at exactly 1 minute after the previous event so this is it from the video i hope you learned something from this video thank you for watching bye